This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. We're in Newcastle here. Um, after the weigh-in ahead of tomorrow night's show, uh, live on Box Nation with me, I've got world title challenger Paul Butler. How are you, Paul? Weighed in now? Yeah, all done now. Um, all set for tomorrow. Yeah. Obviously, you can't go too mad because you've got that uh, weight limit of £10 that you can't go over uh, according to the IBF rules. So, uh, you're going to have to just keep it on a level. Yeah, we'll have to watch what we take in, but... Last time I boxed, I, I banned some weight early, put £12 on, walking into the ring, so we should wake up at about £9 over tomorrow morning, and then we'll, we'll get on the scales, and then we'll refuel a bit more as well. Bit of an interesting uh, heated weigh-in between you and Stuart Hall. What was said on stage there? I couldn't quite hear it. I was right at the front there, but I couldn't quite hear it. Um, he just pushed his head into mine. Uh, a few words got exchanged. I told him we were finishing tomorrow, and that, that belt's coming back with me. And, that's what I honestly believe. I can't see it beating me. Mm. I know where um, I sort of asked you yesterday, it was a little bit awkward yesterday, I'll be honest with you, when you two uh, sat next to each other uh, after the press conference. But we spoke, asked you about you know, the, the weight difference. I mean, I know it's £3, but at your size, it could be a crucial £3. But you know, you're not looking at that as any sort of factor? Nah, um, when I sparred him, I could have made flyweight. He was a big bantamweight back then, so and I felt comfortable with him then. Now I'm a full bantamweight. Um, three pound won't make no difference. Uh, if anything, going into the home straight, it'll, it'll play a big part for me. I believe anyway. Um, I spoke to your trainer, uh, Arnie Farnell, yesterday, and I said to him, a year ago, did he sort of envisage you fighting for a world title at this stage of your career? He said yes. Did you think last year that? 12 months on that you'd be in this position you are now? Um, no, not really. I thought, I thought Frank and Francis and the team had just keep putting like the Mexicans and the, and the tough the tough kids in front of me just to gain the experience. But I honestly believe if Stewie Hill wasn't champion, I wouldn't be boxing for a world, champ, a world title. But Stewie Hill took his chance and we've stepped up the weight and, and now we're, we're obviously boxing for a world title. Mm. You, you're regarded as one of the sort of hottest properties in... Uh, in boxing in this country but do you believe that this chance against Stuart Hall is your best chance I'm not saying ever but of claiming a world title that you won't get a better chance than against Stuart Hall 100% um, I wouldn't say an easy chance but if there was a easier chance than this then I'd be surprised I think um, it's great for the British public as well but it's an all British class but so I don't think I'll get an easier uh, opportunity then to take a title and to take off Stewie. Mm. Experience wise, Stuart Hall is more experienced than you, uh, rounds boxed and just the uh, the amount of 12 rounders he's had etc etc but um, do you think it's going to come down to ability versus ability on the night rather than the factors of experience? Um, I think there'll be a factor in both parts to be honest I think He'll have his moments, he's, he's bound to have his moments in the fight, but I just think I'll have the edge in ability and class and I think the cream always rises to the top and I believe that's what will happen tomorrow. Mm. What's your plan now? Between What do you usually do after a weigh-in? Just chill and just refuel basically. Um, obviously filling up with a bit of water and a few, uh, a few drinks off the strength and conditioning coaches and um, I'll eat in about half an hour and then hopefully keep an eye on the weight because of the limit we've got and uh, wake up tomorrow just under ten pound over. Absolutely. Just sitting there talking to your dad, he's a bit of a nut of your old man, isn't he? He's a nutcase mate. You should hear him at the press conferences, I had to tell him to be quiet yesterday. I was there, I was there. I didn't know it was your dad actually that was sort of having words with Asif Valley, but um I didn't realise until afterwards that, that was your dad. But it was uh, it was quite get, comical. He still gets started but uh, he kept it a little bit of hush yesterday. Yeah? To, to the previous um, press conference we had, that was quiet. Yesterday. Really, I wasn't at that yeah, one, so. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he likes to get his word across. Listen, he's, uh, he's your dad, so I suppose he's got to, got to say as much as anyone else. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Well, listen, Paul. Wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Uh, like I said, another all British world title fight. You can't beat him. You can't beat no. two British boys fighting for a world title in this country, especially. So. Um, Best of luck to you and to it all tomorrow, and uh, let's see what happens tomorrow night. Definitely. Cheers, Coog. All right. Thanks, no worries. Coog and Cassius, Paul Butler, IFL TV. Thank you very much.